Welcome to Roland's Travels, it's your host Roland Millward and thank you for joining me on this podcast. I have another special guest for you. It's the turn of Glyn Coy, who has a very special interest in the county of Wiltshire. I'm going to interview Glyn and he will explain more. Stay tuned. Well, welcome Glyn to the podcast. Nice to have you here. How are you doing? Yes, I'm very well, thank you, Roland. Very well indeed. Even though I've only just got over um, a bout of the dreaded COVID, but um, I'm fighting fit today, thank you. Oh, that's good. We don't want too much of that uh, around. There is a lot of it going on at the moment, I'm afraid. A lot of people I know have come down with it, so glad you've recovered. So really, Glyn, we'd just like to to talk to you um, about... um, your website and podcast and things like that in a moment but can you just give us a little bit about your background at the moment how you've come to do all of this yeah that's fine um so um originally i can't I, I live in wiltshire now and i have done for 16 years um we moved into on the outskirts of trowbridge yeah 16 years ago and um you know for the first few years we're just muddling along but then um i started to explore the county a little bit and um and that led to you know me taking out my camera and and almost you know documenting what i was doing so it was became a bit of a hobby um but yeah but i'm not originally from wiltshire i'm not a native I'm a, i feel like i'm a bit of an immigrant um but i do have a quite a lot of enthusiasm about the county and i try to um share that and i share the places that i find and the things that i find that um i think are relatively hidden to to a wider audience through the various platforms that I've built over the years. Excellent. Yeah. So you've got the, the website, it's called hiddenwiltshire.com. Um, yes. There's a clue in the name, I think, to that, hiddenwiltshire.com. So what inspired you to create it and to to look at Wiltshire from that point of view? Um, I think it was because there's so many well-known parts of Wiltshire that are on the tourist trail, like the Stonehenge and the Avery and places like that. Um, but I was more interested in uncovering the places that were not so well known. Um, there's a lot of hidden gems in the county. And um, for me, it was about trying to find those for my own purposes and just sharing the things as I went. I think it's, it's an interesting week to be discussing this because the first place that inspired me to take this up was actually um, a wood on the outskirts of Trowbridge called Biss Wood. And um, at this time of year in the autumn, it has this most amazing show of colour in the leaves um, on the corner that you can see from the main road, actually, on the A350. And um, I took my drone out there and took some aerial shots of it. And I was so impressed that um, with the output, I mean, it was better than anything you could see at Stourhead or any of these other famous places. And I thought, this is an obscure little wood on the edge of Trowbridge. And, um, you know, it's probably got the best awesome colours I've seen in the county. So I thought, well, that's not well known. So why don't I just post something up about that to start with? And um, that was in 2016. So, yeah, six years later, I'm I'm still out there trying to find the new places um, or the hidden places and still trying to share them. Yeah, what I found during lockdown when you couldn't go very far, (laughs) um, literally restricted to walks mainly, that even just walking around where you live, there are little gems that you find even just off the housing estates uh, uh, little relics to the past or whatever so if you just go around with your eyes open sometimes I think the modern age would become car drivers from A to B you've got to go to a tourist place with a car park (laughs) and you're missing all this stuff on the 50 miles that you're driving you know that's that's very true and and the interesting thing for me as well doing this 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 thing in Wiltshire is that as, as I've gone to each location um over a while you build up a mental picture of wiltshire in your head where you're stitching together these this little jigsaw of wiltshire and you start to understand how all the various places are connected not through car drives or through roads but through ancient trackways so you start to piece together the landscape and understand how humans have interacted with it and traveled through it and and traded through it over the years it's it's a really been a really interesting project from that perspective and i never thought that would happen um, but now I travel around and I have my little landscape markers that I look out for. Or, or if I'm out in the countryside walking in the middle of nowhere, I'll, I'll spot somewhere from a distance that I know about and think, oh, yeah, that's Furs Knoll or um, oh, there's the Pusey Downs or, um, you know, there's the edge of Salisbury Plain. And I can know where I am and find my way around. It's quite, quite good like that. 
Yeah, and uh, I don't know about yourself, but I like to find out about the people, what what they were doing. So things like that, where they're traveling, how far did they travel? And um, what did they do for jobs? What did the job involve? I've just been reading your latest post on HiddenWiltshire.com uh, about Britford. Yeah. And I came across the first time in my life a word called Anchoress. <laughs> the, the poor lady was locked in the church tower <laughs> uh, yeah. for a life of prayer. And that's where she stayed. And that's the thing is that um, as we go, as because I've got, it's not just me who writes on the website now, there's a couple of other people and I've had a lot of guest writers over the years, but we all share this common thing about, we're, we're, we all are interested in the history. And, and really it's about as we go in the landscape and we see some human activity that can be as old as the, the Neolithic, so you're talking the, the late Stone Age, um, you always find evidence of what humans have done in the landscape and um, then you start to explore a little bit more, you dig a little bit more and find out more about it. And um, that can stretch right back, as I said, to the Neolithic up to, you know, more recent times. Um, and then you're finding sort of also myths and legends about locations as well. But there's always something to find. Um, even if it's just a little church in the middle of nowhere, you can find a story about it. And it's the human side of it that makes it interesting, I think, and really brings it alive. Yeah. And what one good thing about living in Britain is that for many centuries, there's been some fairly good documentation, hasn't there? You know, yeah. from birth certificates, marriage certificates, right through to, you know, uh, historical writers in the past who have diarised things as well. So there's lots of information we can find. Well, that's, that, that's right. I mean, I was recently leading a walk for Wiltshire Museum up on Fifield Down and we went to the Devil's Den and looked at some of the old sarsen stones up there. And it brought to mind, you know, a few months ago, reading Samuel Peake's diary where he travelled from, from Bath through to Avery and beyond um, towards Marlborough and was talking about the Sarsen stones and um, how remarkable they were. And you think, well, what we're seeing here are the same view, the same point of view that Samuel Pepys had all those hundreds of years ago, and it's all written about. Um, so it's really nice to connect the past like that and connect with those characters that um, we know about. Um, but also in, in the prehistorical sense, it's, it's good to kind of, be out in the landscape and see something that's not documented it's, it's prehistoric and just try to imagine what the communities would have been like and where they would have lived and how you know there's a lot of um in Wiltshire there's quite a few Iron Age hill forts and you try to imagine what life would have been like in the pre-Roman period when they were building these huge forts on the hillsides um, and making their mark and we can still stand in those places in the same place and get their same sense of awe. of course the landscape in Wiltshire's change very much it's not developed so you may very well be seeing the same kind of view that they saw all those thousands of years ago yeah it's quite a thought that isn't it yeah mm. who, who stood on this spot you know and what were they yep. doing at the time yeah yep. and uh people like you and me just lived in a different era really and uh that's right that's right but they would see the same hills the same viewpoint the same sunsets um just in a different time period and that's that's quite reassuring in some ways um, but you know you can trace the whole of history through it. I've often thought maybe there's a book in this and I actually, actually think someone's already written one I, I noticed one recently but he was trying to um, talk about the history of Wiltshire through the landscape so you can or sorry the history of England through the Wiltshire landscape so so you can go right back to the Neolithic up to the modern day and talk about various historical events that shaped Britain through Wiltshire and and you know when you go to somewhere like Morgan's Hill you can stand there and you can see um you know um, ancient Neolithic sites you can see Bronze Age you can see Iron Age and um, you can see a Roman road and you can also survey you know the area of land where um the opposing armies in the English Civil War fought as they were making their way towards the Battle of Roundway Down. And then, of course, we've got the modern day on Morgan's Hill with the um, police transmitters. It's just to, you can stand in one place and see thousands and thousands of years in history in one place, which is quite quite something. Not many places in this country you can do that. No, no. And one advantage living in a fairly rural area compared to a city in the middle of London. Yes. That's got its own history, of course, but it's nice to have it in a rural landscape, isn't it? Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> So thinking about the places that uh, you've you've been to and obviously you've you've blogged about a quite a lot of them and pod and on the mm. podcast as well. What have really been your sort of favorite hidden places? 
I think a place um, that I do go back to time and again, and it is a real favourite, is, is, is the area around um, the villages of Bratton and Eddington. Um, they sit in the foothills of Salisbury Plain, so they're, they're at the bottom of the escarpment. Uh, but as you go up the hills behind them, um, there's so much to see and explore. Um, and um, one of the mis- things that keeps drawing me back, and I find it quite mysterious, is, of course, around Eddington, is is supposed to be historians think but there's no definite proof of this but that was where the battle of eddington or the battle of ethendon took place in 878 between king alfred and the viking armies of guthrum and down in one of the um, valleys there in lukum bottom it's called is a sarsen stone um called the which is known locally as the bloodstone and it does have a kind of orange tinge to it when the sunlight catches it Um, But it was believed to be used as an execution block um, at the end of the battle where people would be decapitated. Now, of course, there's no evidence for this at all. So it's in many ways, it's it's probably a bit of folklore, but it is quite fascinating. And then behind there, you've got the springs, because in that area, you've got um, a geological space where the chalk of Salisbury Plain um, comes up against the the clay of of the, the adjoining land. And that's when you get chalk meeting clay, that's where you get springs. So there's a lot of springs in that area where you get quite a lot of water gushing up from um, the water table below. And there's just a lot of interesting things around there that um, I've discovered and explored over the years that I I just love going back to and and using my imagination to to think about it. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's uh, I think that's um, a great story. Obviously, in the English language, that's a very important place as well, because as someone once said, if King Alfred had lost, we could have all been speaking Danish. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows, they, they might have been able to beat the Normans. So, <laughs> Yeah, I know. History, history, you know, it's often hinges on these little things, doesn't it? And um, yeah, the, the history of this nation may have been very different if that battle had gone in a different direction. Who knows? But it. um, it's fascinating. It really is. It is. Yeah. And that's that's another part of the history we've got is I mean, so many conquerors and different languages and mixed in and it's, it's yeah. changed everything. Yeah. But there are other places as well that I find interesting. I find the Deverell Valley very interesting and some beautiful walks there. And actually um, walks and, and an area of countryside which is much underused. You don't see many people up that way. Um, but there's a distinctive there's a very historical Roman feel to the Deverell Valley. There's been quite a lot of Roman finds. And, and the two Roman roads intersect, it is believed, at the the, um, the ford at Kingston Deverell. Um, and from there, of course, you can trace the Roman road that goes all the way back across the Great Ridge through Groverly Wood back towards Salisbury. Um, but, but these places are still today very, very rural and um, very quiet and peaceful. Um, but still, there's, there's a rich history to them, um, which, which really, to me, brings them alive. And um, yeah, so so that's just two places, but also over towards there are the more manicured places that are a bit more modern. Like I, I love walking around the Font Hill Estate, um, which has its own fascinating history, far too much history to go into on this podcast. But it, it, it's some of the characters, there, if you look into the character of William Beckford, who, who once owned the Font Hill Estate and was an absolute character um, and built um, his own um folly which was a consisted of a sort of fake monastery with an enormous tower that eventually collapsed years later and that was to house his art collection and he went on to to um, own um, a couple of streets in Bath and and built the Lansdowne monument on the edge of Bath so um, fascinating history in those places but all very different and 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 as I say the Font Hill estate now is still a working estate and um, very manicured and, and interesting but but lovely to walk through yeah. Isn't that the one that's now got a whiskey distillery? Yes, be. it has. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Definitely a place to visit one day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. That, that, that's an added incentive, I think. Yeah. It would be rude not to try it out, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> Excellent. Have you got any trips coming up that you've got planned that are going to whet our appetite for anyone who'd like to come along and listen to your podcast or read the blog? Well, no, I, I always have things in the background, but actually um, we you'll have to watch this space. We've got a big planning meeting coming up in November where we're going to map out the next year. Um, and we'll probably publish something about that. Um, but there's lots of places I've still got to explore more. I've got to go up to the north of the county and do a bit more exploring up, um, you know, north of Swindon over there. That That's underexplored for me. Um, and the far east 
um, of the county um, I've dabbled in, um, but would like to explore more, particularly around the hip, hip and scoom area, um, where there's a lot of archaeology up there that's not really been uncovered, but I'd like to do a bit more exploring up that way. Um, but as, as always with these things, a lot of it depends on tip-offs as well. So if anyone's listening to this and has their own hidden part of Wiltshire that they think no one knows about or deserves to have a wider audience, do get in touch. And we'll take a look at it because we often depend on tip-offs from people about new places. Yeah, that's right. Good. Well, we'll do that. We'll uh, pop in your website link and podcast link into the description for the podcast here so people will be able to find you. So that'd be good. Um, is there any other way they can find you at all other than hiddenwiltshire.com or the podcast on Apple? Um, I'm on, you can find us on, on the usual social media places. So we have a Facebook page, Hidden Wiltshire. Yep. Um, we have a, a Facebook group where, you know, we have more involved chats and things like that. That's that's searchable on Facebook as well. And I'm on Instagram and um, Twitter as well. Um, on Twitter, I, I do post quite a lot of photographs about things that I find as I'm out and about. Um, but yes, yeah, so an active social media presence. But the website is the real hub of everything that we do. Um, we've also produced a couple of books about Wiltshire. Um, one of them sadly is sold out, but another one is still available on the, the website. Um, and that is also a good way of finding out more information about the places that I've found along the way. I don't know about sadly sold out. I thought that might be a good thing. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's sad in that I'd love to sell more. Yeah, some um, more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'd have to find a new a new print of that one because these, these are self-published books. They're not, they're not yes. available. Yeah. Actually, they are available. You can buy, um, you can, they are available in Devizes books and Devizes. Um, so they may have some copies of both, both the books. They've certainly got a copy of the second one, um, but they may have some of the first ones still in stock. But I'm, I'm all sold out of the first one. Um, but yeah it was, it was they were far more successful than i ever imagined and it just shows that there is an audience and an enthusiasm for finding out more about this wonderful county that um, we live in yeah and they say that and over the years like yourself there's been a lot of newcomers to wiltshire because it's an it's been an expanding area with trowbridge and chippenham and Carn and caution and all these places yes. westbury warminster they've all been expanded to yes. basically bring people in as opposed to a growing population in itself hasn't it so yes very much I, I don't know how what the what the original Wiltshire rights would add up to but <laughs> I should think they're a dwindling number compared to the influx yes. that's, that's come yeah. over the years yeah. yeah excellent well Glenn thank you ever so much for joining me on the podcast it's uh, great to have you here uh, I wish you well with Hidden Wiltshire we'll pop in as many links as we can into the description so people can find you and uh, tune in to what you're doing and certainly uh, i've enjoyed reading the blog posts listening to the podcasts and finding out things about wiltshire uh, right on the doorstep almost for me because i like yeah, I mean, i'm in trowbridge so not too far from you so yep. um, you know we'll uh, hopefully see you again soon and we look forward to your your plans for next year to see what uh, hidden gems you're going to bring us yes thanks very much for having me on the podcast roland much appreciated it's been a pleasure thank you once again, I'd like to thank Glyn Coy for joining me on Roland's Travels podcast. It's interesting to find out about how people have these wonderful uh, journeys finding out about their locality. And Glyn is certainly doing that with Hidden Wiltshire. So his website, hiddenwiltshire.com, will pop a link in the description below if you're able to access it, along with other ways that you can find out more about him. Thank you for being a listener to Roland's Travels podcast. It's greatly appreciated you're here. If you're not a subscriber yet, please do subscribe to the podcast. And also, if you're listening to this at rollermillward.com, my Substack website, click subscribe there as well. So thank you very much for joining me today. We've got more interesting people to interview, so stay tuned for that. And if you're a subscriber, you'll know when those podcasts are made available. Take care. <laughs>